So I'm here at Doi Pui Mountain with Joel and Lee. And we're at the Hmong village. Oh, here's Lee. Good, good <laughs> Hi, we're coming here together today. You've been here many times, aren't you? Every, I want to come here very often. If every day is great, but it's too far to See, come. The noodle people, so <laughs> yes. I'm really looking forward and to that. And here is the best over all of Thailand for culture. As Lee describes, the journey to the Hmong village takes a while. Leaving Chiang Mai behind, you find yourself on a winding road that weaves its way through lush green jungle. As you climb, the air freshens and cools, while passing temples, food stalls, cars, and cyclists challenging themselves with a climb. The jungle is dense, but occasionally you capture a glimpse of Chiang Mai in the valley below. So we're here at uh, Joel and Lee's favourite cow soy place. They've got pots bubbling up over here. I'm really dying to taste it. You can really smell the aroma in the air. It's tickling the taste buds already. Can't wait. Lee's telling me about the spices. This is like sturdy bud. And then you buy it home. And you just need to use the hot oil pulling on the chili. And then they will become very tasty chili. Ah. It's called chili oil. Okay. They're so tasty. And the highlight from this, beside the, the kimchi. It's okay, it's kimchi. so is it like pickled vegetable or is yes, it fermented? Like, this is the sour of cow soy beside beef. Ah, okay. And then put some chili on. Oh my god, the flavor is like jump. Wow. Jump to another level. That's so good. We've got a pot over there for the noodles to go in. Yes. And we've got the and chicken so and sweet. beef over over the back there. And owner of these cows, they are so sweet and so welcoming every time. Every time they say, yeah, you're coming back, you're coming back, you see you for a while. It's just like, like your grandmother or grandfather or like mother and father just take care of you all the time. We love it. Well, welcome. What an incredible view so, from yeah. the cow soy shop. Like the right up the mountainside, like above yeah. the clouds and, here. And I learned English since I middle school, but we learned how to Definitely a nice like break from the heat for me. It's, uh, it's like a Scottish oh, summer, a little bit more humid oh, and uh, just beautiful and cool <laughs> at the top of the mountain. We've got the accompaniments, we've got the lime juice, there's some sugar and then Lee's essential ingredient, the chili oil. Joel's ready to tuck in already. We haven't, yeah, yeah. We haven't even really introduced where we are and he's, he's, dying, he's dying to, to tuck into the food already. It's like, every, even though I live, I mean, it's a, as the crow flies, it's not too far, but even though I live basically right there, it is such a mission to get up here. It's like such a reward every time when that, that same bowl, even though I order the same thing every time I'm here, when that dish hits the table, you're like, it's real. I'm here again. It is a dream for anyone who's interested in an exotic dish, for anyone who's interested in like a one-of-a-kind food experience, but more than the food because of all the little details of what exists along the way. The couple who own this place are also one-of-a-kind. The location is incredibly beautiful. And the dish, the dish on its own, even if we had this in a not pretty, not friendly setting. It would still be worth going to eat this dish because it's so good, but when you have those extras, it just builds and builds until it's like, yeah, a dream-worthy trip for just a bowl of noodles. And it's, this is the, the Doi Pui Khao Soi. And it's great. It's great to be able to share it with Steven. So what, what's the name of this, this place, uh, Joe? So the uncle's name is Lung Su Rin. Su Rin is his name. Lung is uncle. So Uncle Su Rin's Khao Soi. Khao Soi Lung Su Rin on Doi Pui, and it's on Doi Pui, but he opened the shop first 30 years ago down in the town. And he just wanted the mountain air, so he just moved everything into this crazy, So I've been in, I've been in the north for, uh, well, I've been traveling Thailand for five years now, and I've never tried cow soy. I've left it till we've got to the north. And I've left it until I've got to Joel's I didn't even, favorite, oh my gosh, okay. favorite noodle place. So. Um, but look at the look at the oil on top of this. I mean, this is going to be 
just a party in the mouth and that coats the taste buds. It's oh, gonna yeah. just be amazing. I'm gonna taste the broth first. The smell. That's beautiful, beautiful, creamy, spicy. Oh, and then you get a little bit of the heat comes after mm. it. Just the slow build on the heat. Really good, look how tender that meat is. Even now it's... I think, Mark, Mark, up, Mark, yeah. Mark. I think... The, meat, the meat's just <laughs> falling apart. I think of this more as like a cow soy stew. It's so thick, that curry is so thick. Because mm. some cow soys are like, just soup. And yeah. some, crazy enough, are just like, yeah, like tomato, tomato soup with... Cow soy is actually just the name of the, the noodle, really. So to go overboard with all the spices, all the curry, all the, yeah, and the beef, okay. I'm gonna try that, I'm gonna try a bit of the beef. Just melts in the mouth instantly, so soft. The taste of the spices are just soaked right into the meat, and just, oh, that's beautiful. Definitely got some uh, compliments here as well. I'm gonna I'm gonna load up on the old chili oil. This one is. Oh, it's thick, isn't it? And these are karen chilies. Okay. So hotter than Thai chilies. Okay. <laughs> so I'll go easy at first. It, it's so thick it feels like uh, cornstarch in water. <laughs> That's how thick it is. <laughs> some of that in there. I'm gonna go easy first until uh, I see how hot it is and then I'll try some of the kimchi on top as well. Lee was telling me that they make this kimchi themselves. Mm -hmm. You can see the chili flakes inside. One, a of, bit. one of the few places that also put chili peppers into their pickled vegetables. There you can Usually see it. this is the only source of heat but she puts chilies in the curry and in the sides and then makes her own to put. So this can really be like a extremely hot version of cow soy, which is very fun. Let's see, uh, see what it's like with that little bit of chili. Uh, Joel's braver than me. He's <laughs> straight but, in with it. But the first time, straight we, in with the full the first spoon. time we put two, and we oh man, look how red it's made that sauce already with the chili. It's gone all red with the chili heat. Uh, I've got a feeling this is going to make me cough. Yeah, that's, that's ratcheted up the flavour quite a bit. Yeah. The, the, even though it's hot, the, it, the um, just amount of flavour added with that chilli oil, it's just incredible. And these chilies, I mean, just one thing after another in-house, locally grown, have, these chilies grow up there on the mountain and they dry them also here. Because she'll sell you these if you want to take I'll some I'll get home. some to take home, I think. That's got beautiful crunch to the kimchi. Oh, yeah. Nice and fresh. I love the crispy noodles on top too. Right. It's nice when you get all mixed in, the crispy noodles and the beef. Thank you. Thank you. So oranges from the back side of the hill. Oh wow. You see they're smaller, but the juice is way better. The juice It'll take longer oranges. to ripen, there'll mm. be more intense mm. flavour. That's like the strawberries back home. Mm. Uh, strawberry in Scotland take a 90 to 100 days to ripen. So that's wow. why they're super soft and really sweet. I bet they're really sweet. Yeah. Woo! See, I'm, I am lit up just by two bites of the... <laughs> Yeah, I, I need a bit oil. more chili oil. <coughs> Didn't want to go too uh, overloaded yeah. at first. Check the heat, <laughs> check the heat level. Mm. Look how thick that is. Mm. It's just like cornstarch. <laughs> so it's a blend of chilies, but then you heat up oil and then just pour it on the chilies and then put the top on and it will stay how, two, how, one month, two months? I mean, Stay she, she probably eats that, but she probably goes through these once every couple of days, but 
it can stay for a long time. So if you want to make it at home, yeah. He says the fresh red onion is is a specific part also. Oh, not okay. using white onions or not using the small red onions that might be somewhere else. Mm. Whew, those are, yeah, raw red onions are very spicy. Noodles have got a nice chew about them as well. <laughs> So these are mustard greens throughout. Some places might use cabbage and mustard greens. So these have even more intense flavor because it's all, all mustard greens. So you got your sourness from both, both the greens and the, the curry. That broth is a little bit sour as well, because she does add some coconut milk. So there's a little sourness, but then the thickness from the beef, the just umami, all the chili oil, because there's oil in that too. You have the oil in the beef. I mean, they're nicely fatty, nicely tender parts of beef. It is just the richest bowl of noodles, man. <laughs> like flavor per bite is just absolutely maxed out in every category. You're right about the coconut milk, but I've seen a lot of them where they make it, there's more uh, coconut milk in it. It's lighter in colour, it's the mm. richness mm -hmm. of that colour is really quite deep. Okay, okay, this is where I forgot to turn the microphone on. We finished the video to allow Lee to eat her noodles, she was behind the camera filming. I've been looking forward to these noodles for some time and they really didn't disappoint. Thank you Joel and Lee for taking the time to drive me to the top of Doi Pui Mountain. If you enjoyed the video, please drop a like, it really helps. And if you want to see more videos like this, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.